Hey YouTube, we are here for the white set review for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. We're going to go through all the white cards today, and then we'll continue on for blue, black, red, green in further videos. And we're going to start out with an Ancestral Katana. Ancestral Katana is one and a white for an artifact equipment at common. Whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, you may pay one. When you do, attach Ancestral Katana to it. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus one. Equip of three. Uh, if you are not attacking alone with a Samurai or Warrior, this card is quite mediocre. Two mana equip three for plus two, plus one is just not a thing that you really want to be doing. You didn't play Bramble Armor, right? You shouldn't have. This is uh, slightly better Bramble Armor, but still not good enough. That said, if you are in white, preferably red, and you are playing Samurais and Warriors, and you are attacking alone with those Samurai and Warriors, which you should be doing because that is the whole point, and that's where you get all the triggers from, paying one to permanently give that creature plus two, plus one. It's pretty good. This is a pick that you will pick very low in pack one, on the wheel for sure. Pack two, pack three, maybe it'll be pre-wheel, but it'll still be like eighth-ish pick if you are in that red-white samurai deck. Up next is Ao the Dawn Sky. Ao is three white-white for a legendary creature dragon spirit at Mythic. It's a 5-4 flying vigilance. When Ao the Dawn Sky dies, choose one. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put any number of non-land permanent cards with total mana value four or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Or... Put two plus one plus one counters on each permanent you control. That's a creature or vehicle. First pick it. It's a 5-4 Flying Vigilance for five. That's very good. And when it dies, it puts plus two plus one plus one counters on every permanent you control. That's probably the one that you're doing if you have more than like one permanent on the battlefield. <laughs> Like, if I have one permanent on the battlefield, depending on my opponent's board state, I'm probably just putting two counters on it. I don't really desperately want to get maybe a four drop, or maybe a three drop and a one drop, or maybe two one drops, or two uh, two drops off the top. But the card's nuts. Like, <laughs> we're nitpicking on whether this is a first pick or a first pick, and whether or not you should always play it, or if you should always play it. And I think you should always play it. So, first pick for A.O. the Dawn Sky. Up next is Banishing Slash. Banishing, Banishing Slash is white-white for a sorcery at Uncommon. Destroy up to one target artifact, enchantment, or tapped creature. Then, if you control an artifact and an enchantment, create a 2-2 white samurai creature token with Vigilance. So, two, uh, two white mana. So, white-white to destroy an artifact or enchantment. So, here's our naturalize for the set at sorcery speed, unfortunately. Uh, but we can also kill a tapped creature. So it's um, take vengeance, I think was one of those effects. Uh, and if we are black, white, probably, or if we happen to have an artifact and an enchantment for whatever reason, we get a 2-2 two -two out of it. Cool. This is all cool. This is all pretty dang decent. You're probably going to pick this relatively high. It's going to be a little bit tricky to cast. It's kind of like Divine Gambit in that case. You're not like splashing this in a, a, a red-green deck. But if you're playing white, I think you want this card pretty highly. Like Fourth-ish pick would be my assumption here. There's a lot of artifact creatures. There's a lot of enchantment creatures. Creatures are going to be tapped. Sorcery speed sucks. So yeah, let's go fourth-ish pick for Banishing Slash. Up next is Befriending the Moths. Befriending the Moths is three and a white for a common enchantment saga. Step one and step two, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains flying until end of turn. Um, that's probably going to be relatively unblockable damage in a lot of situations, as long as you have a creature. Um, so that's not too shabby for three and a white. It's a little bit costly, but okay. But it comes back as a 2-4 flyer, which is... Okay. This card is all okay. It's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination. It's an enchantment, should that matter for your enchantment deck. Um, it's a fine creature, and it's going to maybe make something fly. Maybe it makes something really stupid fly, like an 8-8 trample. 
Now it's a 9-9 flying trample for the turn, and that'll be nutty. So yeah, I think this is a relatively low pick. We're in like the 6th through 8th, not even 6th through 8th. I... I like these grades where they are. I think I just need to remind people a lot that 8th pick is not a bad pick. You are still typically picking good playable cards at 8th pick. Um, so yeah, let's go 8th pick for Befriending the Moths. Up next is Blade Blizzard Kitsune. Blade, Blinner, Blade Blizzard Kitsune is 2 and a white for a creature Fox Ninja at Uncommon. It's a 2-2 two -two with Ninjutsu for 3 and a white. Double Strike. So this is, uh, oops, surprise, you're taking 4, which is pretty good. And then you've got yourself a, a Double Striker. I'm also pretty okay just playing this as a 3-mana 2-2 two -two Double Striker. Double Strikers are nuts, especially in a set that has a bunch of plus 1, plus 1 counters kicking around um, and uh, equipment and stuff like that. A um, little bit weird for this to be out of the ninjutsu deck. Ninjutsu is blue-black. So I don't quite know what this one's doing with ninjutsu. Um, and it's not a samurai or a warrior, but I think the card's good. I think you'll pick this in the uh, fourth-ish pick range, and you'll look to modify it just a little bit. Up next is Born to Drive. Born to Drive is two and a white for an enchantment aura at Uncommon. Enchant artifact or creature. As long as Enchanted Permanent is a creature, it gets plus one, plus one for each creature and or vehicle you control. Channel, two and a white, discard it. Make two one, one colorless pilots that crew vehicles as though their power were too greater. So it's three mana. It's three mana to get it, give at least plus one, plus one to a creature. And that will grow as other things grow. We've had auras like this before, I'm sure of it. That have been plus one, plus one for each creature you control. And I've never been a fan of them in Limited. Like, there's just so many ways to interact with the creature and get two for one real bad. That I'm not really feeling terribly into this aura here. Um, getting two pilots probably would be better in the blue-white deck. I do think this is probably a blue-white spell. More than anything else, really. I don't know. I don't like auras. You know I don't like auras. Nothing has changed about auras. I think auras have gotten even worse in modern magic. Um, I don't like getting two for one. So I'm relatively low on this card at the moment. I'm going to look like I think I'm on like 8th-ish pick for this card, unless I'm in blue-white and I want the pilots. In which case it might go a little bit higher. So maybe it's a pack 2, pack 3 card, but I'm not really interested in this. I don't like auras, and this is not making me like auras. Up next is Brilliant Restoration. Brilliant Restoration is 3, white, 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 for a sorcery at rare. Return all artifact and enchantment cards from your, grave from your graveyard to the battlefield. No. <laughs> absolutely not three white 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 is a ludicrous casting cost and i have to have very specifically artifacts and enchantment cards in my graveyard yes there's a bunch but i can't control that there will always be a bunch this is commander this has no place in limited this is an f yes somebody will do it once and it'll be amazing it's an f you'll win way more if you just don't ever play it up next is Cloudsteel Kieran. Cloudsteel Kieran is two and a white for an artifact creature equipment Kieran at rare. That's right, it's an equipment creature. It's a 3 2 flyer. It has reconfigure for five. So at sorcery speed, you can pay five to turn this into an equipment. Well, it is an equipment already. So rather, you, you turn this into not a creature and you attach it to another creature. You can also pay five to unattach it. So turn it back into a 3-2 a flying creature. The equipped creature has flying, and you can't lose the game, and your opponents can't win the game. This is going to be annoying. It's a 3-2 flyer for 3, which is already good. Already playable. And if you have 5 mana, and you're okay jamming this onto a different creature and losing your 3-2 flyer for the time being... You now have Platinum Angel. You now can't lose the game. And the creature that has this has flying, which means it can just attack in and get in for a bunch of damage. And then if they do kill the creature, 
they didn't even kill the platinum angel because now you have your cloud skin cloud steel Kirin back and you can attach it to something else. This is the first time white has gotten this rate for a 3-2 flyer. Wow. Yeah, this card's great. It's an easy first pick. Um, and I think a lot of that is because it's a 3-2 flyer for three. Um, but if you can get the mana and if you can get to a board state where you just start saying like, well, you are not winning this game until you specifically deal with the Kirin or deal with every creature I have. Um, so yeah, Cloud Steel Kirin looks pretty good. I'm going to first pick it. Up next is Dragonfly Suit. Dragonfly Suit is a Gundam for two and a white. Uh, it's an artifact vehicle at common. It's a 3-2 flyer uh, crew one. So it's it's Sky Skiff again. Crew one is real cheap. This is totally playable, totally fine. Common card. It's not a high pick. If you're in blue-white vehicles, it'll go up a little bit. But crew one is typically what you want to see to make a, a common vehicle playable. And it makes this one playable. So... I'm on like 6th through 8th pick for Dragonfly Suit. You don't have to feel embarrassed playing this card. Um, just make sure you have ways to crew it, I guess. Uh, I guess with so many vehicles pick kicking around, you could end up with too many vehicles and not enough creatures. Um, so do keep that in mind, but that probably won't come up much. Up next is Igonjo Exemplar. Igonjo Exemplar is 1 and a white for an enchantment creature human samurai at common. It's a 2-1. Whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Um, yeah, this is this is your filler card for the red-white samurai deck. Uh, a piker is not okay anymore, um, but this is a two-mana 3-2 three -two if it attacks alone. And if something else is attacking lo uh, alone, then that's bigger. Maybe your 3-3 three -three haste rare that gets indestructible is now a 4-4 four -four haste rare. Um, this is your filler. You're going to pick this... Probably around the wheel, you know, you don't have to spend real picks on this card, even when you're in this deck. Um, there's just so much else that you should be picking, but this is going to be a, a kind of meat and potato card for that deck, I think. Up next is Era of Enlightenment. Era of Enlightenment is one and a white for a common enchantment saga. Step one, scry two. Cool. Step two, you gain two life. Cool. Step three, it is a two, two first strike. Cool. It's all okay. It's all okay. It's an enchantment for your black-white deck. It's um, it's a 2-2 first striker for your modification deck, so it becomes a bigger first striker. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I know you meant for that samurai. It's also applicable for this one. It's an enchantment creature for your black-white deck. Um, it's all good. It's all fine. It's not a high pick. Sixth through eighth range. It's all fine. Up next is The Fall of Lord Conda. The Fall of Lord Conda is two and a white for an uncommon enchantment saga. Step one, exile target creature and opponent controls with mana value four or greater. Cool. Um, that's usually pretty dang playable. I usually, or at least I used to like them out of the sideboard. It does feel like nowadays anything four mana or greater is just so insane that you need to have ways to kill it, so you may as well main deck it. And this, you get to main deck it, and also do nothing on step two. <laughs> Each player gains control of all permanents they own. That's probably not going to matter. But then on step three, you get yourself a 1-3 defender that when it dies, you draw a card. This is all totally fine. You're basically playing this as three mana kill something big maybe at some point in the future draw a card also it's an enchantment creature um totally okay this is around the like fifth ish sixth ish range again destroying something mana value four or greater is not like it's not unconditional and you have to get stable to a point in the game where you are okay to kill something because a lot of things you need to kill also have three mana or two mana that happens um, so I'm not going to pick this like unconditional removal or ludicrously highly, but I'm happy with this in the like fifth-ish range, I think. Up next is Farewell. Farewell is four white white for a sorcery at rare. Choose one or more. Exile all artifacts. Exile all creatures. Exile all enchantments. Exile all graveyards. Sure, here's your six mana wrath for the format. Six mana, a little bit expensive. 
but a wrath is a wrath, and this wrath blows up uh, a lot of other relevant things as well. Cool. First pick. Up next is Go Shintai, Go Shintai of Shared Purpose. Go Shintai is three and a white for a legendary enchantment creature shrine at Uncommon. It's a 1 3. It's got vigilance. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay one. If you do, create a 1 1 colorless spirit creature token for each shrine you control. No. I don't think this looks very good. Four mana for a 1-3 with Vigilance. Oh boy. And I can make a 1-1 one, one each turn. 1-1s one, don't fly. I get the cute thing that you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get the other five shrines, which is not something you just casually do because these are uncommons and they're legendary, so you're not playing two of the white ones. If you want to get more one ones you have to get one of the other shrines so i'm pretty off this this is again one of those things where like Haha, i'm gonna have some fun i guess and try this and see if it works but realistically i'm just not playing this card in any like serious deck so heavily wheel i guess i'll just i'll, I'll keep it just off of an f so that people don't yell at me i suppose up next is Golden Tail Disciple. Golden Tail Disciple is two and a white for an enchantment creature, Fox Monk, at common. It's two, three with lifelink. This is one of the simplest creatures we've had in a while. Uh, it's okay. There is no life gain deck in this set, I don't think. Um, I haven't seen any life gain payoffs. So really, this is a two, three for three enchantment. Maybe you can modify a little, a little bit. It's very filler. This is in the like eighth pick to wheel range. It's okay. Like... I'm not not going to play it. I'm also not going out of my way to pick it or play it. Up next is Hotshot Mechanic. Hotshot Mechanic is a single white mana for an artifact creature Fox Pilot at Uncommon. It's a 2-1. Hotshot Mechanic crews vehicles as though its power were too greater. So it's um Glory Seeker. It's a Glory Seeker that can crew four. Savannah Lion, sure. If you want to get real old, it's a Savannah Lions. Um, this is fine if you're in like the vehicle deck, but you aren't spending a super high pick on this. Like this is like six through eighth, probably even wheel. If you're in the blue white deck in pack two, pack three, you can pick it just a little bit higher, but it is just a two one. So don't go nuts on it, but. It'll be very playable in the blue-white deck, and it'll be relatively playable in most aggro decks. Um, but don't spend super high picks on this. Six through eight. Up next is Imperial Oath. Imperial Oath is five and a white for a sorcery at common. Create three 2-2 two -two white samurai creature tokens with Vigilance and Scry 3. That's a lot of mana. I don't want to play this. That's a lot of mana for three two twos. I know a lot of people love spreading out their 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 power and toughness, but what am I doing with three two twos on turn six or later? Like call the cavalry is good because it's four mana. This is six mana. I'm out on this. I don't see a reason to play this. That's just way too expensive. F for Imperial Oath. Up next is Imperial Recovery Unit. Imperial Recovery Unit is two and a white for an artifact vehicle at Uncommon. It's a 3-4, crew two. Whenever Imperial Recovery Unit attacks, return target creature or vehicle card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to your hand. Seems fine. Three mana, 3-4, three, crew two is okay. That's kind of like fine baseline for a vehicle. And uh, getting back a little thing to your hand is cute. It's not to be all end all. We're in limited. Your one drop and two drops typically aren't going to be crazy nut so amazing cards like they would in constructed or else pl other places. So this is um you know, a vehicle that I'd play and I'd be pretty okay with it in the like fourth, fifth 
pick range. Emphasis on the fifth, I think. Fifth, sixth, maybe. We'll see how vehicles play in this format. I was scarred by vehicles when they came out in Kaladesh. They were horrifying and broke the format. Um, and they've never been as good since. So we'll see. Let's go fifth-ish for this one here. Um, Black White has a bit of a vehicle theme. Yeah, they have... Uh, Black White is have an artifact and have an enchantment, but there's also a decent number of pilots. Up next is Imperial Subduer. Imperial Subduer is two and a white for a creature human samurai at common. It's a 3-2. Whenever a samurai or a warrior you control attacks alone, tap target creature you don't control. That is a pretty far step down from Territorial Hammer Skull. Because the reason Territorial Hammer Skull and Star Crown Stag and all of those cards was amazing is because you would attack with your team and tap something down. Now, there are still going to be a ton of board states where this is amazing because they have one blocker and you attack with your one samurai and it taps it down and probably gets a couple of other bonuses maybe. So I think this card is fine, but I think it is again sort of like the... um the the filler for the samurai deck you should never feel bad playing it you just shouldn't spend like a super high pick on it multiples could be cute multiples could be cute the trick with that is to always remember statistically speaking on average you should only ever expect to have about 2.4 copies of a common in a given draft pod but yeah, if you get multiples of these, that would be pretty cute. But yeah, I think this is the like, this is the common for that deck, right? It's the common that you are totally okay playing. You are picking this like 8th-ish, 7th-ish. Pack 2 pick, pack 3, you'll probably pick it a little bit higher. But um, pack 1, get into the deck first and then be happy to pick this up. Up next is Intercessor's Arrest. Intercessor's Arrest is two and a white for an enchantment aura at common. Enchant permanent. Enchanted permanent can't attack, block, or crew vehicles. Its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. In this set, pacifism will not be very good. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, there is a running joke because everybody always says in every set, this set, pacifism won't be good because of exploit. Pacifism won't be good because of this. Pacifism won't be good. Be pacifism is always good. And this is always good. And this isn't pacifism. This is arrest. Um, arrest is good. Play arrest. Pick arrest highly. Second pick arrest. It says arrest in the name. It's not even subtle. Second pick for intercessor's arrest. Up next is Invoke Justice. Invoke Justice is one white, 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 white for a sorcery at rare return target permanent from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then distribute four plus one plus one counters among any number of creatures and or vehicles target player me controls. That's really hard to cast. Like, you have to be white, and you don't, I'm not talking like nine planes, eight swamps. You got to be playing 11 planes, 12 planes, and something worthwhile needs to have died for you to bring back. Like, I don't think I'm like, aha, I will bring back my, where the hell is it? hotshot mechanic and get some counters on it so there's th this is the type of card that i don't necessarily like where there's a lot of stuff going on that has to happen right for it to be amazing and it will be amazing it'll be nuts like you bring back your five five flyer and you jam a bunch of counters on it Oof, that'll be crazy you don't really get to control when that happens though so I'm always hesitant about cards like this. I'm always a hesitant about cards with casting costs like this. I suspect that when the dust settles, this card is like real. 
maybe even just don't play it. And I think I'm going to start there. I'm just not picking this card until I see that, like, repeatedly, consistently, it does well. I think it's too hard to cast, and I don't think it does enough. I'll try to wheel Invoke Justice. I'm never going to wheel it, because somebody's going to second pick it immediately, but I don't think they should. Up next is Katsuna Ace. Katsuna Ace is one and a white for a creature fox pilot at common. It's a 2-2. Whenever a vehicle you control attacks, choose one. That vehicle gains first strike until end of turn, or untap Kitsune Ace. So this is pod racing, right? Okay. Seems great for the blue-white deck. Or any deck that has a decent number of vehicles. You need to have vehicles. Like, you're not playing this in a deck where you have one vehicle or two vehicles. You, you need to be the vehicles deck. But giving your vehicles first strike should be really, really good. Um, getting to untap Kitsune Ace in case you need like an emergency jump blocker next turn or something is cute. But really, it's all about putting first strike on stuff. This is a relatively low pick. We're in the eighth-ish pick range, even the wheel range. But once you're in blue-white, you'll play it. It'll be fine. There's probably better things that you can play. Maybe you get so many better things, this doesn't even make the final cut. But you don't have to feel bad if it does. Up next is Kyodai. Kyo, 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 Kyodai. 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 Soul of Kamigawa is three and a white for a legendary creature dragon spirit at rare. It's a 3 3 flash flyer. When Kyodai, Soul of Kamigawa, enters the battlefield, another target permanent gains indestructible for as long as you control Kyodai. Pay white, blue, black, red, green. Kyodai gets plus five, plus five until end of turn. Is pilot a new creature type? I don't think so. I feel like there were pilots in... I, I'm 99% sure there were pilots in Kaladesh. So 3-3 three, three Flash Flyer for 4 that permanently gives indestructible to something else so long as you continue to control this is real good. This is like... This is a shade away from like bomb territory. Like this is not like, ha ha, I have now won the game. It's more like, ha ha, I will probably win this game. Um, it's still a first pick. I don't think anything's going over this. It has flavor text at the bottom. I don't think you're ever attempting to actually pay white, blue, black, red, green to give this plus five, plus five. Um, but yeah, good card's good. First pick it. Up next is Light the Way. Light the Way is a single white mana for an instant at common. Pick one. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or vehicle. Untap it. Return target permanent you control to its owner's hand. 99% uh, of the time you're going to do the first one and the fact that this is instant speed is really nice. Instant speed counters, which means instant speed plus one plus one. Permanently. Cool. Instant speed modified. Instant speed um, make uh, 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 your attacking creature bigger so it doesn't actually trade. Instant speed on this makes this a totally fine combat trick, which means you're still wheeling it. Like, eighth pick, maybe. You're not spending a real pick on this card. But this is a combat trick that I will certainly play. Up next is Light Paws Emperor's Voice. Light Paws Emperor's Voice is one and a white for a legendary creature fox advisor at rare. It's a 2-2. Whenever an aura enters the battlefield under your control, if you cast it, you may search your library for an aura card with mana value less than or equal... Or a card with a different name than each aura you control. Put that card onto the battlefield attached to Light Paws Emperor's Voice, then shuffle this card's commander only. There's not enough good auras. The good auras are removal. This card is not for us limited players. This is a commander only card. Put it in your commander deck. Don't ever play it in limited, like, you're going to find something better than a vanilla 2-2 two, two for 2. So, hard wheel and realistically in modern era limited magic, it's an F. You can't put a vanilla 2-2 two, two in, in a deck in modern limited magic. And also, feel very sad that this is in your rare slot. Other players will get rare bombs. You opened this. 
Up next is Lion Sash. Lion Sash is one and a white for an artifact creature and equipment cat at rare. It's a 1-1. One, one. Uh, pay a white, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a permanent card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Lion Sash. So it's scavenging ooze, kind of, with some modifications. Uh, it's got reconfigure for two. And the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each plus one, plus one counter on Lion Sash. This card's great. This card's great, because when it's reconfigured, it still has the activated ability, so you still get to pay a white to go scavenging use. This card's... <laughs> you opened this rare. Some players opened this rare. This is a snap first pick. It's very, 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 very good. Uh, easy first pick. This is, again, not quite in the bomb, haha, I've won the game this turn range, but it's in the haha... I'm on my way to win in this game range. Up next is Lucky Offering. Lucky Offering is a single white mana for a sorcery at common. Destroy target artifact with mana value three or less. You gain three life. I'd have to see the stats on this. Um, it's probably playable in the main deck. But like... It's not unconditional, and it's probably not killing, like, the artifacts that you really care about. So this is, like, eighth-ish pick, and I think realistically I'm probably going to have a tough time finding a spot to put this into my deck. I'm just going to have better cards than this. So I think this probably does end up living in your sideboard unless you missed on playables. And then out of the sideboard, if your opponent has some sort of scary three or less mana value uh, artifact, side it in. It'll be great. But otherwise, I don't think I can... I hope I never have a deck where I'm able to main deck this because I just have better cards. But in this set, it's probably okay to main deck it if you have to. But yeah, eighth pick, wheel, maybe even. It just hits so low. Up next is March of Otherworldly Light. March of Otherworldly Light is X and a white for an instant at rare. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may exile any number of white cards from your hand. This spell costs two less to cast for each card exiled this way. Exile target artifact, creature, or enchantment with mana value X or less. Cool. Unconditional. Creature. Artifact. Enchantment. Removal. As long as I have one plus whatever my opponent paid for theirs. If I desperately have to, I can exile cards from my hand. You probably shouldn't. But this is great. This is unconditional removal. This is the first pick in the vast majority of packs that it's in, if not all of them. So yeah, easy snap first pick on March of Otherworldly Light. Up next is Michiko's Reign of Truth. Michiko's Reign of Truth is one and a white for an enchantment saga at Uncommon. Step one and step two, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each artifact and or enchantment you control. So at least plus one, plus one, because you have this enchantment. Um, obviously, black, white, blue, white are looking to probably have the most artifacts and or enchantments. It's going to be pretty hard to control exactly how much this boost is going to be, plus it's a two-drop saga, which means because you want to get whatever this creature is, you may not play this immediately, like on turn two, because then you wouldn't get the benefit, because you probably don't have a creature down. Um, but anyway, step three, it becomes Portrait of Michiko, which is a zero-zero enchantment creature human noble. Uh, Portrait of Michiko gets plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. She is an enchantment, so she is at least a one-one. Uh, obviously, this is a black-white, blue-white enchantment and or artifact deck card. If you are not in those and you don't have that many enchantments or artifacts, this is probably very filler. But if you are in those decks, this goes from filler to being probably just pretty dang good. So I'm on like fifth-ish pick for Michiko's Reign of Truth, I think. I don't know that I'm I don't know that I'm jumping in. I might jump in on this. Especially if I had, like, another white card or two in my first four picks. 
because then the white black deck and the white blue deck are heavily going to make use of this uh as is the white green deck for that matter what's the other one white red i guess white red's the one that's probably not going to make a ton of use out of this um yeah, I, I could see fourth, fifth pick for this. I, I think it should be pretty good in most of the decks that White would be playing. Up next is Moth Rider Patrol. Moth Rider Patrol is a single white mana for a creature fox warrior at common. It's a 1-1. One, one. Pay three and a white. Tap. Tap target creature. Seems real bad. Real bad. I don't know when tappers got so expensive. Back in my day, tappers, you tapped them to tap something. And then magic evolved and you paid a mana and tapped to tap something. Nowadays, you're paying like four, you're paying five. It's a 1-1 one, one flyer that I don't care about. It's technically a relevant creature type because it's a warrior. But this just doesn't look like a card that I want to play. I can't imagine this makes any deck that I ever play willingly. Hard, 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 hard wheel on Moth Rider Patrol. Up next is Norika Yamazaki the Poet. Norika Yamazaki the Poet is two and a white for a legendary creature human samurai at Uncommon. It's a 3-2 with Vigilance. Whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, you may cast target enchantment card from your graveyard this turn. It's pretty cool. Again, you probably want this in, like, the white-red deck because that's where you have your, all, like, all of your samurais and all of them are caring about attacking alone. And that is probably the deck that's going to have the least enchantments. But the fact that you may still have enchantments kicking around, there are enchantments, samurais, etc., is kind of a cool upside here. I just don't know that you're going to be... Um, I, I don't know that you're going to be triggering this multiple times. I feel like you might trigger this once or twice. Uh, it gets around timing, yeah. So uh, you would cast the card immediately as this effect resolves, um, regardless of what kind of enchantment it is. Um, so yeah, Norika Yamazaki, I think, is probably totally okay. Goes up in value as you have enchantments, um, but luckily is a playable-ish creature, uh, even if you're not activating this a ton. So I'm on like 6th through 8th pickish for this one, impact one, and it goes up a little bit if you do have um, a few things that you could recur with it happily. Up next is Regent's Authority. Regent's Authority is a single white mana for an instant at common. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. If it's an enchantment creature or a legendary creature, instead put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, and it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. All right, bog standard combat trick that sometimes you'll get a counter instead of half of it. This is one of the combat tricks where there's a good chance I just go the entire format without ever bothering to put this into a deck. It's very low impact. It's very low value. It's very low pick. Like, wheel this... And you probably should be able to find enough playable better cards than playing this one. But, you know, end of the day, it's a combat trick. Maybe you play it. Up next is Repel the Vile. Repel the Vile is three and a white for an instant at common. Choose one. Exile target creature with power four or greater. Exile target enchantment. Probably just main deckable. Um, again, some formats. Killing something power four or greater. And this might just be like modern magic versus old magic. In old magic, I typically would sideboard these cards because your opponent wouldn't always have a power four or greater creature. These days, maybe maybe people just do have four power greater creatures just a lot more commonly. But this also has exile target enchantment and it's instant speed. So this just seems like a totally playable um, card. It's not quite unconditional removal because it's not going to kill, um, you know, the bomby whatever 3-3 three, three that's not an enchantment. But this should kill something fairly worthwhile, fairly regularly. I'm happy in the, like, fifth pick range for Repel the Vile. 
Up next is the Restoration of Iganjo. The Restoration of Iganjo is two and a white for an enchantment saga at rare. Step one, search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Sure, whatever. Two, you may discard a card. When you do, return target permanent card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Okay. That might do something, maybe. And then it becomes a 3-4 enchantment creature fox monk with vigilance, and whenever Architect of Restoration attacks or blocks, make a 1-1 one, one colorless spirit creature token. That's a good creature. Everything on this card is fine. Everything on this card is fine. It's pretty dang cheap. Um, it gets you that land in case you need to hit your fourth land. Obviously doesn't fix you at all. Um, it maybe will return something. That's the part that I'm iffiest about because you just may not have anything to return. Step two might just be a kind of a wet fart of discarding a card. I guess you could discard that card and then return that card. So you could even discard the the planes that you drew. So actually you probably will return something, um, which makes this a lot better now that I've read through that and thought through that. And then the creature is just good. So I think you'll pretty happily first pick this. It's very far from the bomb range. Like you are not... You are not, haha, winning the game because you played this card. You're not even like, haha, I will probably win this game by playing this card. But the card is just good. So you'll first pick it, and it'll be pretty good. Up next is Selfless Samurai. Selfless Samurai is one in a white for a creature fox samurai at Uncommon. It's a 2 2. Whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, it gains lifelink until end of turn. Sacrifice Selfless Samurai, another target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn. This does some pretty cool things. So your, your exalted samurai is going to get lifelink in addition to whatever else that it gets. And then if that samurai is going to get blocked and killed or something, for one time, you can sack this to keep it alive, as well as all of the other use cases of sacking this in response to removal and yada, 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 yada. I think this card's quite good. Pretty high pick in like the fourth, fifth pick range. And this is really going to do some work in those red-white um, uh, uh, samurai decks. Uh, Dreadvira, we started with multicolor and artifacts and lands. Up next is Seven Tail Mentor. Seven Tail Mentor is three and a white for a creature fox samurai. It's a common two three. When Seven Tail Mentor enters the battlefield or dies, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or vehicle you control. Okay, so it's a four mana three four. If you put the counter on itself, and otherwise put counters on other things. Counters are always good. Now they're modified. If that matters, you'll notice that as much as we've talked about modified. Not a single white card has ever said the word modified creatures, blah, 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 blah. But this card just seems like a fine common. It reminds me of Gavany Silversmith just a little tiny bit. Um, but even a Gavany Silversmith is like 6th through 8th pick. You don't have to spend a really high pick on this one. Up next is Sky Blessed Samurai. Sky Blessed Samurai is six and a white for an enchantment creature human samurai at Uncommon. It's a 4-4. This spell costs one less to cast for each enchantment you control, and it's a flyer. So this has to be... This has to be five mana for me to be, like, okay with it, right? At four mana, I'm pretty happy. Anything else is crazy. So if you're enchantment heavy, you can probably get by playing this a lot more, but I want a large number of enchantments in my deck. I am never paying seven mana for this. I am never paying... I, I, I would strongly prefer to never pay six mana for this. I want to pay five mana or less. I want a Sarah Angel or, or an Aral Elm Elemental, yeah. Um, it is a Samurai, which is very good if you're in that deck, which again is unfortunate that... Well, I guess if you just load up an, on Enchantment Samurais, then your red-white deck still has a lot of enchantments. But yeah, count your enchantments. I think you need a large number of enchantments to play this. But if you have them, this card could be quite good. But yeah, don't... <laughs> Don't pay seven mana for this. Don't pay six mana for this. 
preferably don't pay five, but that's where it starts to get okay. Um, so this card, I will probably like. Like pack one, I'm way down on like six through eighth pick, I think. Pack two, pack three, it'll be a nice reward to have. Up next is Spirited Companion. Spirited Companion is one and a white for an enchantment creature dog at common. It's a 1-1 one, one. when it ETBs draw a card. Unless I need enchantments, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. ETBs. I had it on dying. For some reason in my head, this was like, when it dies, draw a card. Um, this is, um, no, this is good. This is very good. <laughs> Erase everything that I just said. This is, yeah, this is Elvish Mystic. This is Elvish Mystic. This is Elvish Mystic with a relevant uh, super type of enchantment. Card's good. Card's good. It's just Elvish Mystic. Um, that said, Elvish Mystic is like 6th through 8th pick, right? You're picking bombs. You're picking unconditional removal. You're picking really, 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 really good cards over this. And then you'll pick this. So 6th through 8th pick for Spirited Companion. Emphasis on like the 6th pick rather than the 8th pick. But yeah, don't spend a super high pick on this. I'm sure people will overvalue it. Um, but 6th pick, it'll be, it'll be good. Up next is Sunblade Samurai. Sunblade Samurai is four and a white for an enchantment creature human samurai at common. It's a 4-4 four, four with Vigilance. Channel for two generic. Discard it. Search your library for a basic planes card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle. You gain two life. I don't think you are channeling this much unless you are stuck on mana real early in the game, which is a nice bit of versatility. That said, the creature is deeply mediocre. Deeply mediocre. This is definitely filler for the uh, the red white samurai deck. Um, you know, if it went on the battlefield, this one probably attacks alone really well with some bonuses because it's already a four four vigilance, right? But it has to get on the battlefield. You are paying four mana for this four four vigilance by itself. It is a common, so it has to be common power level. It does fix for your white if you somehow missed on white. So all the versatility still keeps this as probably a playable card, but I think it's still on the very filler level of playable. Um, so I'm looking to like eighth pick this. Um, realistically, I feel like a lot of decks will simply have better cards than this and it won't get played. But I think it is uh, playable if filler. Up next is Touch the Spirit Realm. Touch the Spirit Realm is two and a white for an enchantment at Uncommon. When Touch the Spirit Realm enters the battlefield, exile up to one target artifact or creature until Touch the Spirit Realm leaves the battlefield. Channel for one and a white, discard it, exile target artifact or creature, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next untap step. There's one half of this card that you will always use. There is one half of this card that, good God, things must have gone real bad if you're using it. The first half is Oblivion Ring. It's fantastic. It's awesome. That is a snap first pick. Very, very, very good removal. Perhaps slightly less good. Perhaps pacifism isn't very good in this set because there is some enchantment hate. Um, the second half is like, Oh God, oh God, oh God, this is in my hand. I haven't used it yet. And they're killing my bomb. Let's not have that happen. It's a very niche channel effect. It will have some relevance now and then, but realistically, you should be oblivion ringing something. Um, easy first pick for Touch the Spirit Realm here, but you use the first half. <laughs> Never plan to use the second half. Up next is Wanderer's Intervention. Wanderer's Intervention is one and a white for an instant at common. Wanderer's Intervention deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. It's Gideon's Reproach. It's literally Gideon's Approach. Totally, totally playable removal. Not quite unconditional because it doesn't kill X5s, but pretty good. Um, this is in like the third pick range. You are picking bombs. You are picking unconditional removal over this, but 
you'll play this and it'll be pretty dang good for most situations. Uh, is this our last white card yet? How many cards are there? Holy moly. Second last white card, the Wandering Emperor. The Wandering Emperor is two white white for a legendary planeswalker with no name. It's a mythic. Starts with three loyalty. It's got flash. As long as the Wandering Emperor entered the battlefield this turn, you may activate her loyalty abilities anytime you can cast an instant. So you can play her for four on your opponent's turn and activate her. And from then on out, she is a normal planeswalker, kind of like Kaito. Kaito has that one turn of phasing. Plus one, put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature, gains first strike in the end of turn. Cool. Good combat trick, too. Minus one, create a 2-2 white samurai creature token with vigilance. Cool. We get a creature. It can protect the emperor. And again, surprise flash creature. Minus two, exile tapped, target tapped creature, you gain two life. Cool. We've got to take vengeance. Um, Wandering Emperor is not one of those, like, absolutely take over the game planeswalkers that we're used to. This is much more the limited style planeswalker of you're going to get a lot of good value out of this. Think Elspeth from Theros. Elspeth from Theros was not like the game is over, but she got a lot of value and really helped to win games. And Wandering Emperor will do the same thing. And it's still a snap first big. And this is why I love this grading scale. I don't give a damn about what the grade of this is. I don't give a damn about what the grade of Wandering Emperor versus Damio versus Kaito is. Because you're first picking every single one of them and you're playing every single one of them. Easy. Because that's all that matters. It's kind of like, who would win, Superman or Batman? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Have fun thinking about it, but it doesn't matter. When We Were Young is our final white card. When We Were Young is three and a white for an instant at uncommon. Up to two target creatures each get plus two, plus two until end of turn. If you control an artifact and an enchantment, those creatures also gain lifelink until end of turn. Um, I'm not terribly into this. If I am in the black-white deck and I get the plus two, plus two and the lifelink, that's pretty nifty. Four mana is still a lot for a combat trick. It is incredibly telegraphed. Um, like many combat tricks, I think I'm going to have a hard time finding a place for this one. Um, it's a real late pick on like the eighth pickish range. Maybe even the wheel. You just can't pick combat tricks that highly. And we'll see if I find a spot for this one. Four mana is a lot. Four mana is a lot, a lot, a lot. So I'm going to wheel it and we'll see if I find a spot for it. But that's going to wrap us up for white. Uh, so YouTube, I will see you all uh, probably tomorrow. Again, one of these days I will have to double up, I think, in order to get the full set out before release. Anyways, tomorrow you'll see blue, probably. See you next time, YouTube.